John Nia from Trowbridge Law Group, and I'm here today to answer the question, what is a safe harbor? So uh, the term comes from kind of the sailing world, I guess. <laughs> if you're on a boat and you're uh, cut out in the storm, there's a raging storm about to destroy your ship, you find a safe harbor to protect yourself. Well, kind of... As a corollary in the legal world, you know, you're navigating the waters of the law and you want to protect yourself. You want to be safe. So you find a safe harbor to protect yourself. And normally how it works is uh, there is a law in place that is kind of vague. It's not really clear how to specifically follow the law. Uh, so what... Uh, you know, the lawmakers do is they'll create a set of rules to give you specific instructions on how to follow the law. And specific instructions aren't necessarily the only way to follow the law, but as long as you follow those instructions, you are safe. So an example is, you know, there's a law against driving recklessly. Uh, it's not really clear what driving recklessly means, but uh, they also pass a set of rules that say, you know, as long as you stay under 25 miles per hour or as long as you stay under the speed limit, you are by definition not driving recklessly. Well, in the securities world, we have a bunch of safe harbors, right? There's tons of rules and tons of, tons of laws out there that are a little bit vague as far as what you can and can't do for selling securities. Now, what are those safe harbors that apply to private securities offerings that apply to our clients or people out there that are thinking about doing a private securities offering. Well, the biggest one, the one that people don't realize is a safe harbor is actually Regulation D, Rule 506B. So it it, it is a rule and we know we talk about it as if uh, this is the law, but 506B is essentially a safe harbor, right? So if you look at the Securities Act of 1933, uh, there was a specific section that says you cannot advertise the sale of your securities unless they are registered with the SEC. Registration is essentially, um, you know, becoming a public, publicly traded company. Right, you're filing your registration statement with the SEC. That's what people or companies that are doing IPO are essentially doing. So there is this kind of general rule that's a little bit vague. Like, how do you how do you sell securities then? Um, without advertising and without registering your, your securities. Well, because there was this vagueness, the SEC, what they decided to do, or Congress actually decided to do, was to create the safe harbor under Regulation D, Rule 506B, which is uh, as long as you have you know a pre-existing relationship with your investors and all your investors are either accredited or you're allowed up to 35 sophisticated investors, you are safe. So you follow these specific rules and you are safe. You will have not been deemed to have um, solicited investors in your offering without registering your securities. That's a safe harbor that applies to our clients. Another safe harbor that's important for our clients is the ones involving integration. So if you watched my previous video about integration, integration is basically when an issuer or company does uh, two or more subsequent offerings to each other and the SEC looks at it and says you uh, basically did that to get around some rule um, now your two offerings are integrated and will become a single offering usually what happens is or usually the reason why it happens is an issuer wants to take advantage of a rule that's more lax for example, a rule that allows advertising, and then immediately afterward, you know, do an offering that's more restrictive, and uh, do an offering that doesn't allow advertising, and basically, you know, get around that ban on advertising by doing them one right after the other, uh, even though they should have done it under a single offering. So the SEC will look at that and say, no, that's a single offering. Well. There's a safe harbor, right? There's a safe harbor for integration. There's actually a bunch of safe harbors for integration, but the most important one for our clients is 30 day safe harbor. So as long as you wait 30 days from uh, you know, the closing of your first offering to the opening of your second offering, you are safe from integration and your two offerings will not be integrated by the SEC. 
Now, with that being said, you still need to make sure that you follow the rules exactly for each offering. So if you do an offering that allows advertising first and then wait 30 days and do an offer, offering that doesn't allow advertising, you still need to make sure you follow all the rules in the second offering and make sure that you, you didn't advertise to any of your investors. That's probably the, the biggest uh, safe harbor that we talk about um, as far as private securities offerings. There's also a safe harbor involving uh, the issuer exemption. The issuer exemption is essentially a safe harbor. Um, so normally when a person is selling securities on behalf of another party, you need to be registered as a broker dealer. But if you are a person um, that is part of the issuer, right? So you're the sponsor in the offering, uh, then there is a safe harbor that covers you because you are part of the issuer. You fall under the issuer. You're an issuer exempt. You are under the issuer exemption, and you do not need a broker dealer license for selling um, the securities of the company that you essentially control. That's safe harbor number three. Um, there's a few other ones that are, you know, smaller and, and you know don't really apply to. Our clients, but those are the biggest ones, uh, I think. The three biggest ones that you know our clients have to deal with. And if you are a real estate syndicator, these are the ones that you're probably gonna have to run into at some point. Anyway, that's what is a safe harbor. Hope you guys learned a little bit. Uh, I know I did by when I researched a little bit to uh, to kind of get some background for this video. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, as always, you know, if you have any questions about real estate syndications, about private securities offerings, our firm, we offer free 30-minute consultations. So go to our website, ProRidgeLawGroup.com to schedule a time with either myself or Gene. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next week.